Are there any other <coughs> announcements? Council LeBar. Um, I just wanted to announce the, um, at the Senior Center, there will be what they call a Just Because sale, which will be held on Friday, January 24th, and Saturday, January 25th, from 9 o'clock a.m. to 2 p.m. And um, also, if any of the counselors would like to help, it would be done on that Thursday of the 23rd from 9 o'clock to like 2.30 in the afternoon, helping set up and putting whatever they're going to sell there, like anything coming from the gift shops and so forth. This money, part of it is used for repairing for the van and so forth like that. So this is a good sale for them. Uh, um, there'll be a community forum about the Lyman Fort Hill estate, that land owned by Smith College behind Lyman Road and its future um, on February 3rd, which is Monday at 5.30 in the hearing room, the second floor of City Hall. So if you have concerns or ideas about the future of that property, you're encouraged to come and let everyone know. Council LaBarge. Uh, one more. The 30th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, the ongoing struggle for freedom and prison justice. Um, there's a great schedule going on throughout the day. 9 o'clock a.m. is the walking tour of the African American Heritage Trail. And that is on the corner of Park and Pine Streets in Florence. 11.30 a.m. is the community lunch being held at the First Churches of Northampton. 2 p.m., it's family friendly with special performances. And I highly recommend that the community get involved because I think this is going to be a, just a great celebration. Um, actually, we had scheduled at this point the city solicitor to come and school us on open meeting and ethics, open meeting law and ethics, and uh, uh, he's not here yet, so we can move further down the agenda. Is he, is he coming or is? saw it on the agenda as well, so I assume that uh, the clerk had been in contact with him. Well, I, I had spoken with him okay. personally, okay. and but I'm, I don't know if he locked it into a calendar, so. My one concern may be that he may um, plan 715 or something, so I, I've texted him a few times to okay. ask him about it, so okay. um, I would ask you to proceed with the meeting and I'll let him know as soon as I know. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Um, so up next, um, and the, we're breaking in three new councils, by the way, so to, and, and we'll be gentle. Um, this is uh, the license and petition section, uh, and this is uh, to his honor the mayor and the city council of the city of Northampton. You undersigned respectfully petitions your honorable body for a license as dealer in secondhand article 11 Bridge Street, Unit C, called the NoHo House of Vintage. Accept the motion. I accept the motion to move it. Second. And is there any discussion on this petition? No, nope, because if you read it, it tells you that there's no outstanding taxes and so forth. So there's no problem with it. Is there any questions? Of the it's this, yeah, the note from the uh, tax collector's office that there are no outstanding taxes at this time. Uh, <clears throat> no other discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those who opposed, say no. Abstentions. Thank you very much. Um, you may have heard of this. this is a petition for uh, street acceptance on Bridgeview Road, which, by the way, we are not voting on. We only vote to refer it, and we will be uh, the motion. I will accept the motion to refer this to the public board of public works and planning board. Move to refer to the Board of Public Works and the Planning Board. Second. Can I move to also refer to the Board of Public Works and City Council Conference Committee? Sure. The, yes. So the, uh, are you okay with that motion? I didn't hear that. He, wa uh, he wants to move it to the BPW Conference Committee with the counselors. Fine. Are you okay with that? And he's a friendly amendment. Uh, any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
Opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? This is a late file. This is a, it's a petition for the uh, street acceptance of Boggy Meadow Road as a city street. Um, you'll see, you'll, uh, the um, secretary has passed out the petition and the signatures. Um, so I'll accept a motion to refer to those same three committees. If no, oh, I'm sorry, we have to, I need to suspend rules for the late file. I'll accept a motion for suspending rules. So moved. Second it. All those in favor of suspending rules so that we can submit this into into the floor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So the next thing, I'll accept a motion to refer this to Planning, BPW, and the BPW Conference Committee. Move to refer to Planning, BPW, and Conference. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Um, now we're up to the minutes, accept the motion to uh, accept the minutes of December 19th, 2013 and January 7th, 2014. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor of these two minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I, you want to abstain from both or just from the January, uh, the December 19th? I'm assuming you're just, yeah. Two abstentions. <coughs> now we've come up to the uh, the appointments of uh, committees, uh, and and there's been a change. You all, I've you all received a submission uh, the, uh, to the press, and the clerk was also uh, sent to you copies of my recommendations um, that. There is one modification to that. Um, in place of myself on finance committee, we uh, will we be replaced with Council of the Barge, is my recommendation. And we'll try and find some place for me to do some more damage on some other committee later on. The question isn't the president required? No longer. No longer under the new charter. You're right. Under the old charter, that was required, and th that was because you recall the mayor also used to serve in the finance yes. committee. We have another problem. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> ah, so I'm on no committees. <laughs> <coughs> hmm. Someone has to be on finance. I'll be on no committees except for Youth Commission. I'm going to ask, no, we need to appoint the committees. We need to. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I thought we had this discussion at the last meeting that the President's, at the President's prerogative, committees can change at any point at any time. Mm -hmm. So, could <coughs> name these now and then make whatever change you may need to to thank you solve some opportunity safety valve yes i appreciate that actually um all right good thank you good counsel thank you um then my recommendation would be these as they stand as they're presented and then a modification will come to make the correction so that we can figure out how it is I get to serve on some committees. I, not that I'm really jumping for it, but I, I probably should, um, instead of just being the liaison to the Youth Commission. So um, as it stands now, so if, if uh, these are the committees as they stand, and I will promise that there will be a change forthcoming. But as for now, just for purposes of the committees to assemble, determine their meeting dates, and to start actually working, um, that I think it's important that we proceed with this as it stands. So, um, and this doesn't get voted on. This doesn't, it's not voted on, it's just essentially me making my presentation in this befuddled uh, and So my, my apologies. Um, do, uh, do you want me to read the committees? The, the um, it's posted, on, it will be posted on the city website the um, 
press has had a copy of this. Is already uh, Chad Kane wrote a piece on it already. I don't see him tonight, but I don't. But so there won't be a story on this as it is. Are you, you're not writing? Are you writing? For the Republican, okay. So you just just write down the council president was confused. <laughs> and that, that ought to cover it, and no one will be surprised. So, um, and the <laughs> I steady hand on the tiller of government. Yes, Councilor Adams. I just want to state <clears throat> um, I was surprised not to be reappointed to the uh, ordinance committee, um, despite the fact that I, you know, redrafted the council rules and um, redrafted the the the, uh, the committee structures and. Um, and drafted some ordinances this term, um, and the fact that I'm the only attorney on, on the on the council, which I think makes me a good fit. But um, one of these committees are hard work, and I thank the council president for for his job, and um, and I look forward to serving this term with the returning councilors and the new councilors. Thank you. Any other comments? I also just want to thank you, Councilor Dwight, for all the work. I, it's obviously uh, seems like it could be quite daunting to use your you know your judgment to try to uh, get these committees uh, staffed and I appreciate all the work you've done on it thank you thank you uh, yeah it is trying to get the fox the grain and the goose across the river and all everyone's safe without eating each other so sometimes it works uh, okay so let's see now we come to a point where we have to elect the chair of the finance. I, uh, okay, so we will recess to go into finance, uh, and then in order to convene in finance, we need to elect a chair of finance. I wouldn't recommend me. Um, so the members of finance are Councilor Adams, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Shara, and myself. So, uh, in absence of a presiding officer, I'll, I'll, I'll preside over the nomination. So, is there a nomination for chair? And I can't nominate. I'll, I'll, I'll nominate the, the, uh, the former chair, Councilor Murphy. Second. Any other nominations? I'll accept the motion to close nominations. So moved. You can second, yeah. Yes. Okay, so second. Second. Um, uh, and then we'll <coughs> call the roll for vote. And when you're asked your name, just speak the name of the person you uh, want to be chair. Councilor Adams. Councilor Murphy. Councilor Dwight. Murphy. Councillor Murphy. Councillor Murphy. Uh, unanimously chosen as chair. I am so grateful to cede the gavel to you. If you want to resume your seat over here, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll stay over here for this meeting since I'm over here already. And I could huck it at it you. It will be okay. more figurative than ever that the gavels. It will be easier to pass the orders. This oh, I'll, I'll come over there then. That's right, because if. I steal the orders, I get in big trouble. Right. Mary would not abide no. by that. That's just... And for, uh, for the new counselors, uh, what we're doing tonight, uh, we're at that point in our budget cycle where the free cash gets certified, and that money gets distributed around to various accounts. Let's and, talk about that. I might suggest before we get started, we move to uh, the mayor is always recognized, but also recognize Susan Wright, the finance director, because we could probably want her input to explain where these are going. Technically, we have to call the roll of the next one. Oh, yeah. We, have we had an election. We didn't call the roll. We didn't call the roll. Yeah, my bad. Ooh. Yeah. We should do that. <laughs> go, go for it. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor Dwight? Here. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor Sheriff? Here. There we go. Meanwhile, um, I move that we recognize Susan Wright. Second. Aye. Thank you. All right. And uh, Susan, the mayor, do you want to? I can start with these orders, or do you want to just run through and explain them? Well, I had deferred 
doing a communication because I was going to sort of just sort of set the stage um, for the free cash certification. And, um, and I did provide a memorandum to you. And, and obviously, uh, we just got word late Friday afternoon that uh, our, our free cash had been certified by the Department of Revenue. Um, uh, well, our undesignated fund balance, uh, someone in municipal government gave it the unfortunate name free cash. And as a wise uh, municipal leader once said, it's neither free and nor is it cash. Um, but, uh, but that's been the term that stuck. So uh, again, the general fund balance was certified at 3.2159. Uh, water Enterprise 4.277876, Sewer Enterprise 3259561, and Solid Waste Enterprise Fund uh, 1934780. Um, the undesignated fund balance or free cash is defined as unrestricted funds remaining from the operations of the previous fiscal year and include unexpended free cash that we closed the previous year with, receipts in excess of estimates and unspent amounts in budget line items. The city's free cash certification is based on our balance sheet as of June 30th, 2013, which we then have to submit to the DOR uh, and, uh, and our auditor presents that information to them. Essentially, they take what we budgeted and then what we compare it against what we spent and determine uh, what funds are still left over from that budgeted, um, from those budget balances. Uh, in terms of what generated this free cash, we've tried to outline some of them from you and we'll actually have some orders related to them. We had a couple of um, changes that the DOR <laughs> implemented. They looked at some of the funds that we had uh, uh, and, and requested that we make a change to them. And so in closing, basically they closed those funds, they flowed to free cash, and tonight we'll be asking you to basically vote them back to the school department and to, to those respective uh, enterprise funds. Um, we also listed some of the other reasons in terms of turnbacks that we received uh, from departments, which is also something that happens every year. Um, and so, but when we basically take out those, um, those school-related uh, those school related pieces of the free cash, it represents 3.6% of our annual budget. And I did include a technical bulletin from the DOR, um, which sort of lays out what sound fiscal policy is, and they recommend a free cash balance between 3 and 5%. Um, so we were coming in at 3.6% of our annual budget. Um, and again, part of our strategy over the last two years has been um, to try to generate free cash so that we would have it for capital improvements, um, but also as a strategy for replenishing our overall reserve position. Um, and so you'll have, we'll have some orders coming up later where we're going to ask you to transfer some of the free cash immediately into our two uh, reserve funds as part of that strategy. Um, so that's sort of a quick overview, uh, and I think Probably I can ask questions generally about it, answer questions generally about it, or we can go through order by order, um, and, and that sort of will walk you through the various pieces of what we're proposing to do with the free cash immediately. Obviously, what's not on here is we will be coming forward um, in the coming months with some other orders, um, including uh, the capital improvement plan, which will use some portion of this free cash to help fund capital projects as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes. My, my preference would be to go along, have you have you explain as you go as along. And, okay. and, I, and <coughs> I'd also like to point out that to other counselors who are not part of finance, they are also able to ask questions that you have to be recognized by this chair. So. I, I'd just like to say that I think it's um, very admirable that we're now up to 3.6% of the budget being um, equaling our reserve amount. Um, the... the um, DOR wanted between three and five percent, and we're at three point six percent. And um, that being up, it's seven point three percent up over last year. I'd, I'd like to thank the, the mayor for that because um, that's a stated goal of the administration to boost our reserves, and um, it, it, it's valuable because not only does it help for emergency situations, when it's valuable to, to maintain our good bond rating because um, when we go out to borrow, um, the good bond rating means we save taxpayer money. So thank you. Yeah, for new councils, this is a nice thing to be able to do from last year's budget to have some little bit of elbow room to be able to put some money in some accounts. Actually, I'm going to hand out, uh, Councillor Adams just reminded me that he had, that we had spoken earlier and he had wondered whether we could provide a 10-year history of what our uh, certification was. And so we did put that together for you. Um, and you can 
can see that um, we've come a long way since fiscal year 2010, when in fact we we had a negative free cash balance that year, uh, 169,930 because of state aid cuts. Um, and you can sort of look uh, look at over historically. Uh, you know, FY06 was a sort of a high water mark, uh, and then you can see as the recession uh, set in in in, in eight and, Eight, nine, and obviously ten was sort of the bottom, uh, and uh, and and of course the ten was not a result of our uh, decisions we made. It was a result of the state mid-year cut the local aid that that they had committed to us that we had built our budget on. So we were among a number of states that finished with a negative uh, balance at the at the certification process. But you can see that in eleven and twelve, and then particularly in thirteen and fourteen, we've made a concerted effort to. Um, to, to rebuild that balance. Would, would it be possible at a later point to have a by department breakdown of, of turn back, of turn back amounts? We can certainly uh, put that together. Thank yeah. You. Yep, we can do that. So um, you have all of these under the finance agenda. And I'm just going to read them one at a time. We can discuss them, ask questions of the mayor, the finance director, then we'll vote on them in finance, and then they'll come back around as orders when, when we're finished. So the first one is order that $101,187 be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. Questions uh, for the mayor on this one? Uh, I, I move to recommend. Second. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's going back, so I can wait till later. Yeah, this was basically there again. This was an accounting uh, issue that had been identified by DOR. Um, some uh, indirect uh, monies that had been set aside for indirect expenses related to grants had been sort of being reserved in one account, and the DOR flagged that as something that was not appropriate. So we just have to assign them their official, essentially. Well, no, well, no actually, they're they're going to basically they want it to just be part of the general of their overall budget, and so we're, they they basically pushed it to free cash, and then we're going to we'll send, send it, it back to them as as an appropriation to them, mm -hmm. and they will work on the accounting structure that has to be in place. Okay. Um, so, any further questions in finance on this one? A motion for a positive recommendation. Aye. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Second one, and these are all upon the recommendation of the mayor. Order that forty-eight thousand three hundred nine dollars be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to the Hortanto Public Schools McKinney Vento Transportation Fund, and six thousand five hundred four dollars be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to the Smith Vocational High School McKinney Vento Transportation Fund. Motion on this one. I uh, move to recommend. Second. Questions for the mayor? Comment? Um, I was just curious, um, how many students in our school district are served by um, this transportation fund? Uh, if that's available. Do you remember from your school business manager yeah, days? It varies from year to year. Okay. It could be as high as 30. Yeah. So uh, the former school business manager says it varies, but it could be as high as 35 students. Um, I can try to get some information from the school department, but I just I just wanted a sense of how yeah. many students it served. Sure. That's the that's a good sense of it. Thank you. All right. Any other questions in finance? Um, if none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation. Aye. 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 All right. The next one is order that five hundred thousand dollars from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance. Be appropriated to the capital stabilization fund. Motion on this one. Move to recommend. Second. Second. All right. Uh, comments on this one? Uh, again, really, um, uh, coming <coughs> to focusing on those two stabilization funds, and counselors um, know that that's a fund that we are um, has a higher level of, um, uh, you know, if you look at free cash as sort of a, a checking account, the uh, stabilization funds are the savings accounts. Those are the those are the savings accounts, rainy day funds, whatever they are, um, and those are particularly important for um, 
for our, you know, for that bond rating perspective as well, because it shows that we're being prudent and we're putting aside reserves. One of the concerns we've had over the last several years in our bond rating call, and actually we're uh, we're about to have a bond rating call, I think next week, um, that we're trying to prepare for. Uh, the, the issue of the percentage of our overall budget that is in stabilization has been a recurring one. And so we've been trying to build those reserves back up to a more um, acceptable target. Um, I think at the end of this, uh, I think I stated that the, um, the t this and the stabilization fund will bring us up to 3%, which is good, but really the 5 to 10% range is, is a more uh, is what we've been told is a is a for a city our size is what we should be aiming for. So we've been trying to show positive progress every year. Are you optimistic about the prospect of actually possibly an improved bond rating upon review? You know, I'm always an optimist, and um, you know, I, f I felt really good last time that we were able to hang on to our bond rating, and I think that um, I think. We have several things that, uh, while we don't have these um, numbers up to where they are, I think we have several really positives that we'll be able to talk about. Um, uh, first and foremost, um, the override uh, will be viewed very, uh, very favorably in terms of the community's commitment and the city's ability to, to be able to sustain itself. That's going to be looked at favorably. The fact that um, we have, uh, well, after tonight, we hope we will have some long-term um, collective bargaining agreements um, with with all of our employees, which is a sign of stability. And and uh, and in some of our past calls, we were in the middle of arbitrations, and there were some uncertainty. So that's a positive. Um, and then I do believe that the um, the economic growth that we've been experiencing, the high level of economic development, which we'll be sharing data with them on is also a positive indicator for the community. It shows a certain amount of economic strength in the community and which, you know, so I think those are three areas which will help us. I don't want to predict a change of rate. Is this Moody's or Standard & Poor's? We're doing Moody's. We're doing Moody's. Yeah, we kind of bounce back and forth to Moody's and Standard & Poor's. So. Moody's that demoted the United States. That's true. The, um, can you describe or do you have any sense of the the variable, the, the dollar amount um, in, in our, our borrowing capability based on any minor fluctuation in, in uh, bond ratings, up or down? Well, you may remember when I did the budget hearings uh, and town meetings a couple of well, last, last budget cycle, um, we presented some data about our current bond ratings and we showed, you know, where we were with Moody's and where we were with Standard & Poor's and we had asked our um, you know, we had asked our bond rating agencies, you know, had we, had we been downgraded and had tried to borrow for the police station project, uh, you know, the last big bond we did, which was, you know, $20 million, what would have been the impact had we been on a lower rating in terms of the amount of interest? And they had, you know, it was significant. It was on the order of uh, three to $500,000 in terms of uh, borrowing costs that we would have incurred. So it's important. Um, I think with Moody's, we have the AA, Double A with a one positive outlook. So, so uh, you know, we'll have to see. It's, it's always unclear because, as you said, the rating agencies are constantly recalibrating their rating systems, um, and so we'll we'll see. Uh, but it's a good it's a good it's a good check in with them to get a sense of how we're doing, um, and obviously if it helps our borrowing costs. That's a benefit as well. And, and to close, I'd just like to echo Councillor Adams. Uh, um, gratitude, I think, um, for the diligence that uh, you and Susan Wright have committed to this this endeavor. I mean, it's it's it, we're coming out of uh, uh, an unprecedented recession, as you point, as these numbers indicate, and your uh, I think the stability that you described didn't just magically happen. It's the stability that's been stewarded, and I and that's your stewardship. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. a way to um, have can we project at all what kind of spending might happen with these uh, stabilization funds in the coming year so that we can have a sense of how it they yeah uh, well f quite frankly um, uh, we've 
uh, unless there's an emergency, we have, try, we have tried to resist using them. We've really tried to use them for what their purpose, which is for emergencies. And you know, you can see um, if you look historically at those funds. And when I do the um, when I do the budget joint budget meeting on the 30th, I'm going to present some historical data about that. You can see that when we did go into the recession and when we did have our state aid cut. We had to. Re we then had to dip into those stabilization funds, which is why they got depleted. Um, and so, really, our goal is to try to rebuild them up to a level for capital stabilization. Uh, you know, we've been talking about get, about trying to achieve a point where we got a capital stabilization fund to a certain level, where then we could try to then use a portion of that to help supplement the the capital budget every year to kind of almost like an endowment for capital, if you will. But really, because we're the levels that these two funds are at, we really feel like we need to still be in a rebuilding mode. Um, and that's, you know, that's the, it's a really, it, uh, it's a, it, it's a measure of discipline for the community, really, because at the same time, you know, we're doing the budget presentation. You know, we're talking about all these cuts and potential cuts in operating expenses, and that's partly why I included the reserve piece in there because it has an impact on those. You know, if our borrowing costs go up, that's less money that we have to spend on day-to-day -day expenses. Um, but at the same time, it also can be hard to say, you know, that hundred thousand dollars we could really use that today, but we really do need to put it aside and, and build up those reserves for when we for when we have. And also just because of the whole f fiscal uh, stability and bond rating piece. So, so I don't think we're quite there. That's a long-winded answer, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, it's more at this point rebuilding them. Um, speaking about them in terms of potentially being an endowment in the future, are they? How do do they earn interest? Or are they kept in something that has like an aggressive? Interest to it, yeah, or well, we, I, it's not aggressive. No, it's uh, we're we're constrained by the um, by the rules uh, of local, <coughs> and, and we adopted prudent rules of investing. And the treasurer has a whole program that he uses um, for these funds. But we're we're you know we're not buying pork bellies or investing in what you know penny stocks, and Teflon or whatever, yeah. whatever. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, we haven't. Um, so yeah, it's it's done very conservatively. And, uh, and, we, and again, that's a good point because one of the other challenges we've had over the last several years is the low interest rate environment has really affected our, that revenue source. Um, so uh, they do re retain their interest. Yeah, they do. I mean, the, the inter they do earn some interest in it and it builds up in the fund. Yeah. So to this one, which is the capital stabilization fund. In finance, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this one's going to sound real familiar because this is order that $500,000 from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance be appropriated to the stabilization fund, not the capital stabilization Move fund. Move to recommend. Second. Okay. Um, do you uh, want to make a it's sort of explanation a <coughs> of the difference between them? Not really other than uh, these are the traditional funds. Um, and, and stabilization, capital stabilization, and we're just trying to distribute evenly to both to get them both up, up, you know, and both will now, I think I gave you the information, they'll both be back up over the $1 million mark. Mm -hmm. And I should note, we also have another stabilization account, which we're not doing anything with, but you may recall that the override created a fiscal, another stabilization account, which is built into our four-year plan. Um, so that's also there, but that remains exactly where we left it when, when we budgeted uh, at the beginning of FY14. Right, so any more questions on this one in finance? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The next one is ordered that 50000 from the FY14 general fund under designated fund balance be appropriated to the FY14 personnel reserve. I move to recommend. Second. Any, uh, this, one? No, this is um, this is again. Uh, we talked a lot about this in the budget process, um, and uh, and we this is a fund that we use um, for uh, to fund potential collective bargaining settlements and other employee employment related changes, retirements, new hires, etc. That happen throughout the year. Um, 
and uh, and where we are um, looking at the fund out to the end of the fiscal year, uh, we're proposing to add fifty thousand dollars of free cash into it to both cover the tail end of one of the transfers we're proposing tonight, and then to leave some in for the remainder of the fiscal year. Um, but this was one that we had um, budgeted and actually added more to um, as well because of the number of collective bargaining agreements. And I think I've come to you now for several transfers from it to fund collective bargaining um, agreements. Well, then, um, given that you've secured these three-year agreements, which is, as you point out, is a um, dimension in a, in a respect of dis uh, um, stability, then this $50,000 or this stabilization fund uh, is not as critical at least in, in a sense that it was, say, a year ago or, or for FY14, where you were still, there, there were a lot of unknowns at that point. You mm -hmm. now have, you can anticipate your payrolls, you can anticipate your, yeah. your costs. And That's the, the other, I mean, that is the other benefit of, the, of the, having those contracts. You know, you may remember those, um, you know, the, the budget presentations we were doing and we were kind of showing these are the knowns, these are the, these are the still the question marks we don't know. And when you go into a budget year and you don't have settled contracts for the next year, that's a big unknown because you don't know what those costs will be. So for FY15, budgeting will be very easy because we will already know what our costs are because we've already negotiated what those will be. Uh, well, uh, follow, hopefully after tonight they will all be known to us. But that is another advantage. So this account uh, will um, will still need to budget funding into it because there are those circumstances throughout the year. But it won't be at the level I think that we were budgeting for FY14. We'll I think the finance director will look at historical, normal historical amounts in that account, and we'll try to budget for it accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Mayor, what am I talking about? Um, appropriation to personnel reserve and we're talking about our unions and so forth and I do know I have received some calls from some of the girls who work in the dining area and they had told me they had great concerns because the contract has not been settled does that include them also um, if you're taught that um, if they're cafeteria workers that would be the school contracts okay. um, which is not part of this, uh, not something okay. that the... So that doesn't involve them. Uh, this doesn't involve them. Um, the school contracts have all been uh, uh, ratified and by the school committee and by the um, NACE, uh, the Northampton Association of School Employees, which includes the cafeteria workers. I know that they're now doing some, they're now in sort of the implementation phase of the contract, so I don't know that it's been implemented fully, okay. um, because that's the other thing that, you know, when we approve these contracts, and particularly in the school department where they have the largest number of employees, it then, HR has to go into everybody's individual record and incorporate all these changes and make retroactive uh, calculations back to, you know, the beginning of the fiscal year and any other Ch uh, step changes or lane changes all have to be calculated. So there can sometimes be a delay from when the contract is actually you know, ratified and the funding's approved to when it's actually implemented. Typically, um, the, we, we sit down with the, um, it's a continuation of the bargaining, we sit down with them, the next step is then come up with an implementation plan and people understand the time parameters. And so it just can't be overnight that it happens because it can be complicated. Okay, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so to this one in finance, any more questions? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the next one is order that $363 from the FY14 general fund on designated fund balance be appropriated to the Northampton Public Schools miscellaneous gift account. Is there a on this one? Um, we'll recommend. Second. Um, any questions or discussions on this one? Uh, just the Office of Campaign Political Finance uh, rules about, you know, the yes, Northampton took what was left in their bank account, gave it, gave it to the, tried to give half to the city, half to the school, but those rules prohibit that type of a gift. It had to all come to the city. We were basically giving the school the intended half that had been intended for them. So all $363. So, so uh, any more questions on this one? 
All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. Aye. Now, the, the next couple uh, involve transferring money to different uh, person, different departments. Order that the following FY 2014 budgetary transfers to settle the collective bargaining agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees hereby be made. Um, the total is $32,872, and it's going to about a dozen departments. Do you want me to read the breakdown? Do you? Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> the auditor is getting $2,553. The collector is getting $2,645. The city clerk's office is getting $4,549. Uh, planning and sustainability is getting $1,307. MIS is getting $1,493. The police are getting 5,860. Building inspection is getting 3,658. DPW administration is getting 2,396. Board of Health is getting 1,515. Council on Aging is getting 659. Veterans Services is getting 955. Recreation is getting $2,639. And the fire department is getting $1,512 for a total of $32,872. Move to recommend. And second. Okay. And, and so I think as I, comments? as I pointed out in the, um, in the memo, this was the very, this was the very last uh, contract at the end of 2013 that we um, settled, and the vote literally occurred the afternoon of the last city council meeting of the term. Um, and so it's been ratified um, by, by the uh, employees and now we need to bring it to you to approve the funding to implement it. And essentially what this funding does is to, um, this is the FY14 phase of the contract, and so it will retroactively back to July 1 um, infuse these uh, various personnel budgets so that those members can be paid their raises retroactively, uh, the, the negotiated uh, salary changes. Um, and then it's, a, it's part of a three-year agreement, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, but this is what's required uh, in order for us to um, finally settle the contract that it's funded. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this one? No? Uh, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. And then this next one is the same thing, but for the non-represented employees. The total of this is $95,796, so we're going to order that the following uh, FY 2014 budgetary transfers um, will provide increases to non-represented employees. I gave you the total. Of that total, of $5,341 would go to the auditor's office, $10,290 to the mayor's office, MIS would get $6,000. 833 human resources 16,155 central services 14,665 the arts council 1,280 dispatch would get 35,376 uh, the fire department would get $2,600 the city council gets a whopping 900 or $809 um, the license commission gets the same $809 DPW administration gets $545, and the police department gets $1,093 for a total of $95,796. Motion on this one? Um, move to recommend. Second. So, just well, by way of oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, yeah. Just by way of background, um, it is our custom that when all of the represented um, employee contracts are settled. Um, we then have a, a small universe of non-represented employees, and so we then try to um, make sure, work with the HR director to look at um, providing commensurate salary adjustments to the, their uh, represented counterparts. Um, so that's what this represents. And we, um, in some cases, we have had, uh, You'll see some different adjustments in different uh, um, departments as well. For, for example, dispatch. If you look at dispatch, that's a significant portion of this one. 
dispatch has been an area that we've been attempting to try to readjust their pay scales um, because we've been having issues of turnover and their pay scales are competitively much lower than other uh, surrounding communities. So this was one area that I would just call to your attention that we, um, in addition to doing some um, you know, doing some changes or making uh, or increases relative to other departments, this was one where we also tried to adjust the pay scale uh, to be more uh, commensurate with their um, with the important public safety work that they do. In some cases, we were having um, dispatchers uh, leave dispatch to take a clerical position because they paid more than being a emergency dispatcher. Um, and so we were, we were trying to make sure that this professional group of folks um, are paid at a commensurate wage. I, I, I just have to say I, I was surprised I thought dispatch was represented. I didn't know that they were not. They are not. Uh, they are not. No. Uh, and, uh, and I'm not sure the history of that, but, um, but that is the current situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. You say uh, commensurate with the represented employees. How, I mean, is it a percentage that you're looking at? So, or is it um, arbitrarily determined? so one of the well, no, actually, um, a, a, one of the things that happened in these other contracts for all these other unions is that there have been changes um, either in part of the negotiations has involved you know colas, you know cost of living, but in some cases it's also involved. Uh, actual changes to their to their sort of step system and in some cases um, uh, we have actually implemented uh, a, a clearer step system we used to have a there, there used to be step systems for many of our uh, manager types um, NAPIA which is all of our uh, mid-level and in some cases departmental level managers um, folks like our uh, our sergeants, our deputy fire chiefs, folks like that, um, they were off of a step scale system um, and were on what was called a, uh, like a performance review type system. Um, the problem is this all happened right when the recession hit and uh, we had a series of years where there was money cuts and basically um, the, a lot of these employees faced kind of a double whammy of um, not only getting no COLA, but getting no step movement either. Um, whereas in some of the um, other employees who have steps, um, but no COLA, at least there was some movement each year. So what we were finding when we then completed this, looked at those scales, because of the movement that had occurred, um, there had been sort of a, uh, that distance between them had, had narrowed. So what we tried, what the HR director, this is outside my pay grade and capability um, was tried to look at those non-represented positions and try to match them up on a comparable scale um, so that they would sort of fit in with uh, and, and keep pace with uh, their counterparts. So um, that's that's what's being attempted here. Also, Barge, did you have a question on this? Yes. Um, Mayor, on the form that you sent to us, I'm just questioning, I'm a little confused with the non-represented employees and ones who are representative, but if you look at that paragraph on the bottom of the first page that mm -hmm. you sent for us, it talks about free cash amount and free turnbacks from departments such as approximately 600000 yes. in unused salary. Mm -hmm. A little confused with that. Yes, yeah, so, um, so uh, what happens is, and we can provide more detail on this, um, in some cases, uh, there are just vacant positions that are just vacant for normal reasons. And so every month that a vacancy occurs, that's salary that's not being expended. Um, and that just may be because of retirement or attrition or whatever. Um, what happened this year in particular was when we reached the point, um, you know, we turned the corner from December to January, and we were facing the level of cuts that we were facing, and we were facing, you know, for example, four layoffs in the police department. We told uh, the, the police chief did not attempt to hire four new officers when we got down to a level of four positions. So those four positions were left vacant purposely because we didn't want to hire them and then have to lay them off on July 1st. Um, and so 
you had those four salaries that were not being paid out. So that's an example of, of a turn back that would come from a department. Um, and that happens, uh, that happens in departments. You may have a, um, you may have a 35 year employee retire and then you hire a brand new employee at an entry level salary. And so for that position, what was budgeted, you end up with a leftover because you're not paying them at the same level. So when you multiply that across a thousand employees, that that's that's how we get these turnbacks and from departments. And on it, you're saying you mentioned the police department, which we knew about that, the fire department. Mm -hmm. How many positions did that involve? In the in the, in the fire department. Well, the fire department, uh, the the fire department, we were not um, holding back. Uh, we, we were not proposing any cuts for a different reason because of grant funding, but we also had vacancies in the fire department. Um, from, we had some retirements that occurred, and there's, there can often be a lag time uh, because of the testing, and then there's the, um, the, the academy piece of it, so there can be a lag time. So there are positions that are, remain unfilled. You know, the, the downside of that is that that can then put pressure on our overtime budgets because we have to then fill those positions and cover those shifts. Um, but the police department in particular um, has had, you know, had issues even before the override um, with keeping positions filled and losing officers to other departments. I'm, I'm pleased to say that I um, believe that all eight of our applicants uh, from the police department got accepted into the academy. So we're going to be sending eight new folks into the academy, which is going to help us address those vacancies. So. And I do recall with dispatch, with the, the problems that were occurring there, mm -hmm. and the Department of Public Works, if I can recall in our budget book, there, there was quite a bit of vacancies. That's correct. Yes. So that, those were not filled. They were just kept the way they are. They were until after the proposition two and a half, if it had passed. Yeah. Half. And in some cases, there are, there were just, there were, um, you know, positions that were budgeted and uh, for whatever reason, there just were difficulties filling those positions. And, and, and in some cases, they may have pulled back and said, we're not going to fill that position. We're going to wait and, and, and not fill it till the next year. So, yep. Thank you. Since we, since we went back a little, I had a question from that same uh, part of, of the memo. The $171,159 in lower charges from the state for outgoing school choice and charter school students. Can you explain that, please? Um, I'm just trying to see where you were. Oh, it's, it's, it's the uh, second page after it's, my it's Right at the top of the second page, right past the council. Yeah, board. so um, so we were we were obviously working on estimates of what those charges would be. Um, but until you actually get to the end of the year and the books close, so when we made the budget, we were, we were projecting revenue in those different areas. Does that mean that fewer students went to those choice to out and the was expected? Yeah. I'm going to let the school expert yeah. talk about this one because she can describe, because she's worked it from the actual business man, school business manager point of view. Right. So on the, um, when we get the cherry sheet from the state that has our state aid, there's the revenue side, and then there's the charges. And on the charges side, they charge us, you know, when they develop the budget, say, finalize the budget, say, in May, they're going on whatever numbers they have. So they give us a charge for the number of uh, students that they know of that are going to school choice out to another town or go to another charter. So those are built into our state aid formula. So we go with whatever numbers that we get for that. And then at the end of the year, all the schools have to file an end of the year report, and then they make all the adjustments. So if a student school choice to another town but only stayed there for two months, we only get charged for those two months. So it's not just the pure number, but it's also the duration that they may have gone to a charter or another school. So some years, we could go, this could end the other way. It could end worse. We could get a higher charge than we were anticipating because it's all based on the actuals. Thank you. So back, uh, back to this order. Any other questions on this one for the uh, non-represented? Please. Mayor, just to finish off that paragraph where um, Council Vice President Jesse Adams just talked about, we just got finished talking about the $600,000. My question is, 
above Jesse's statement where he was talking about, it talks about a, approximately 390,000 and unused medical due to fewer employees on health insurance. So with these vacancies, somebody retires, isn't it still their responsibility to pay for part of that insurance and the city pays the other part? Yeah, I think what they were, what we're trying to refer to there is that, um, you know, when we when we budget for health care, we're budgeting for the, whole the thing. number for the number of employees we think we need to provide health care for. And so, when you have if you have you know two or three or four or five vacancies, then then that's money that you don't have to spend in health care costs for the city's portion. Um, obviously, if they if if someone retires and is a retiree then they would go, they have the option to go on retiree health insurance. But that's um, still a vacancy law. Um, well, it, de it depends on if we fill, if we backfill the vacancy or not. Okay. So it could be a vacancy or it could be another, a new employee is hired in their place. Um, so it, it just, it depends on each individual <laughs> situation. But that was the reference there that because we have vacant, if we have vacant employee positions, then the fringe benefits that go along with those positions, we don't have to pay. So. So, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation on the non-represented employees? Aye. 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 And the only, if I could just, the only thing I would ask for is, at a minimum on the ask me one, if I could request two readings on that, um, that would be helpful. The non-represented one, um, obviously it's not a, it's, in the ask me, um, in all of our contracts, this vote is, is, is a condition of the contract going into effect. So, um, so that's why we generally ask for two readings on those, um, un unless there's some reason you don't you want to nullify the contract. So that's why I'm asking if you could get at least two readings on the ask me. Obviously, the other employees would be helpful too, um, but what, what I, on the minimum, they ask me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, then the last two in, uh, in finance were that pursuant to Chapter 40, subsection 5B of Mass General Laws, the City Council hereby authorizes the creation of a water stabilization fund for the purpose of funding expenditures relative to the operations and capital needs of the City's water system and both to transfer from the Water Enterprise Fund retained earnings the sum of $701,643 and from the FY14 Water Enterprise Fund transfers to capital projects the sum of $60,000 into the Water Stabilization Fund. Move, move to recommend. Second. Second. Okay. This, is a, this was a, project, a DOR uh, project that wasn't just Northampton specific. It was an issue they were looking at and statewide. and. Um, and uh, we had had some uh, funds reserved for future capital projects, which I think you may recall um, Mr. Culhane coming in and gave a long presentation, I think last year, just about their strategy of, of trying to build up some funds within the Enterprise Fund for capital projects so they wouldn't have to borrow for them. Um, and so what the DOR said is uh, uh, not a problem, Per se, but they wanted them to be in a stabilization fund, a traditional stabilization fund, um, and so we are basically um, what this order is doing is uh, closing those accounts. Uh, they're flowing to free cash. We're then going to take those monies, send them back to the inter respective enterprise fund, and at the same time create a true stabilization fund and put them in that stabilization fund. Now, will these stabilization funds require our action to transfer it out? Yes, they will. So, okay. Which is another, I believe it's another important piece of, yeah. um, so, of the puzzle of, of in terms of, uh, yes. So it gives this body some control of the reserves and those funds that we didn't have before. I, that, is, that is another added benefit of this, which I'm also pleased about. Yeah. Councilor Lamarck. Um, I want to thank you, Mayor, for explaining the reasons of why we're closing one and reopening another one. I received a couple of calls on that today, and actually one from a resident in Ward 3, in regards to what was the purpose of this happening. So I'm glad that you explained that. It means we're getting two new stabilization funds, but, mm -hmm. but, but there's a, you know, stabilization funds are a recognized you know, format and have recognized rules and accounting procedures, and so uh, this will just kind of standardize it. And this isn't new money. This was 
the money exactly. was there for this purpose exactly. anyways, which exactly. is classifying it as stabilization. That's correct. And, and to some extent restricting it being spent without coming back here first. That's that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, so the, I think it's important to note the takeaway from this is, first of all, this is conforming to the law and the order of the Department of Revenue. Exactly. But more importantly, as Council Murphy pointed out, it gives actual representative oversight, elected representative oversight on the allocations and, and uses of those funds. Mm -hmm. So it actually makes more vigorous the process of, of transparency and 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 best practices. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I, I think that's the most, mo for me, that's the most important takeaway from this. Mm -hmm. uh, he answered. Any other questions in finance? Any? Either of you have any more on this one, or okay? So, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And the last one, pursuant to Chapter 40B, <coughs> Subsection 5E of the Mass General Laws, the City Council hereby authorizes the creation of a sewer stabilization fund for the purpose of funding expenditures relative to the operations and capital needs of the city's sewer system, and vote to transfer from the sewer enterprise fund retained earnings. In the sum of four hundred and forty three thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars and from the FY fourteen sewer enterprise fund transfers to capital projects the total of sixty thousand dollars into the sewer stabilization fund. The motion to recommend. Uh, second. Second. Okay. And again, this is same thing for sewer. Exactly. With yeah. The same conditions. Any other questions? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 And I think that uh, uh, move to adjourn out uh, of finance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we convene back in council. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and now for the new councilors and for folks watching at home, it's going to be deja vu all over again. <laughs> this is where, and and I and I think. It's appropriate to have an explanation here. We, the way the Finance Committee is structured is that the Finance Committee convenes in the course of the Council meeting to discuss the financial order so that all the Councilors can be present for the discussion and, and understand the recommendations. Um, so all we did there was make our recommendations um, with your participation, of course. So um, usually, although not always, um, it becomes uh, somewhat moot as we move out and vote on the issue on the floor but that's to explain to folks at home we're now on the floor we're now at the point of uh, the official council meeting so we're it's we're that's how we're planning it so um, okay next up this is ordered that one hundred one thousand one hundred eighty seven dollars be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance AKA free cash to Smith Vocational and Agricultural School. I'll accept the motion and put it on the floor. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion or questions? And, and by the way, the mayor and Susan Wright remain recognized so that they can answer any further questions anyone has. No? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Okay, next up, this is the uh, final recommendation. This is of the mayor. Order that $48,309 be appropriated to the FY14 general fund, undesignated fund balance, to the NPS McKinney Vento Transportation Fund. And that six thousand five hundred and four dollars be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to the Smith Vocational uh, Agricultural High School McKinney Vento Transportation Move Fund. To approve. Second. Any further discussion on this? Any other questions? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Yes.
with the motion. Okay, approved. Second. More questions? Discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shearer? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. This is for the financial order of uh, the appropriation of $500,000 uh, from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to be appropriated to the stabilization fund. Second. Any more questions? Okay. Council yes. Council Klein? Yes. Council Lavarge? Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council O'Donnell? Yes. Council Sheriff? Yes. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Boyd? Yes. This is the appropriation of $50,000 from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to be appropriated for the FY14 personnel reserve. Move to approve. Any other questions? Roll up, please. Yes. 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 Uh, this is the appropriation of 360. Uh, yep. Sorry to interrupt. I just um, the only thing I wanted to point out to you, and I tried to explain it in the um, finance committee, was that depending on your decision with regard to two readings on the um, person, two personnel-related orders, that order that you just voted on may need two readings. Um, I'm sorry. That was I, I was going to ask that. So you, for the personnel account, for the personnel reserve, you would like the two readings for this as well? Um, it, it, yes, and, it, and especially if you were to take two readings on the two oh, personnel-related accounts yeah. because that is needed to have enough funds in there to cover both of them. Um, Move to so. suspend rules. There's been a motion to suspend second. the rules on the second. The motion is to suspend rules to allow for the second reading. Um, uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll accept the motion and put this Move on. second reading. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Oh, you need a, I guess you need to roll it again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we do need to roll it again. Sorry. Thank you. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Just a question for Councilor Adams under our new rules. That has to be a super majority, doesn't it? To suspend the rule? Yes. So if it wasn't unanimous, we might have to roll at some point. Yeah. yeah. That's the first time it's come up. Yeah. Excellent. We're still learning the, uh, the new chart. The um, this is next up is the appropriation of three hundred and sixty three dollars from the FY fourteen general fund undesignated fund balance to be appropriated to the Northampton Public Schools miscellaneous gift account. This does not require to I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. Motion approved. Second. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Fooled you. Fool myself. Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lombard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. yes. This is um, the FY. 2014 budgetary transfers of $32,872 uh, to settle collective bargaining agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME. Um, this is one that will, the mayor has requested two readings on this, but this I'll accept a motion and put it on the floor. Sir. Um, any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Suspend rules. Sorry. Been a motion made and seconded uh, to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. All those in favor of uh, suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Second reading. Second reading made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. This is the transfer of $95,796 from the personnel reserve 
the various accounts that provide increases in non-represented employees, and this is also an invitation to uh, have two readings, mm -hmm. but I'll accept the motion and put the first. To approve. Second. Uh, motion to remain seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call. Yes. Councilor Clyde? Yes. Councilor Clyde? Yes. 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 Move to suspend Sus rules. Second. Second. Motions are made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading this evening. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Move second reading. Second. second. Uh, motions been put on the floor. Any further discussion? Guess what? Yes. 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 Adams. Yes. Yes. And then for the final two, two, this is the authorization of the creation of a water stabilization fund and the vote to transfer $701,643 from the Water Enterprise Fund retained earnings and $60,000 from the FY14 Water Enterprise Fund transfers to the capital projects into the Water Stabilization Fund. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. uh, roll call. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sherr? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Next up is the authorization of the creation of a sewer stabilization fund and a vote to transfer $443,317 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund retained earnings and $60,000 from the FY14 Sewer Enterprise Fund transfers to capital projects into the Sewer Stabilization Fund. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 The ones that passed the first reading will come back and we'll be voting on them again at our next meeting, February 6th. Ooh. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me give a pre preface to this. We're coming up to, this is second reading <coughs> on all these. This is the City Council Joint Rules and Orders that we approved. The one thing that we should amend, and I hope, I, I don't know if anyone wants to present a formal amendment, but if you recall, the Committee on Investigations and Hearings we discussed, but never voted, how that was going to be constituted. Um, currently, it stands that there are three members, and there are three members appointed. But originally, it was discussed that it was going to be a standing ad hoc committee with the chair appointed, and then as um, hearings or, or investigations presented themselves, it would be up to the council president to determine who would be the most appropriate constituents of that committee, given the investigation. I would accept amendment, an amendment to the rules stipulating that for the final vote on this so that we can actually have that committee uh, represent at least what we discussed. And if, if people's minds have changed, of course. I move that amendment. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? Councilor Adams, you, uh, do you want to speak to that at all? Could you tell me what you want to say to this? To, well, Actually, it's kind of weird because that, now this basically has me proposing the amendment. But the amendment is. Well, I, I moved the amendment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, but as you described it, it was what we discussed at our meeting before uh, um, regarding this committee, and as that uh, many hearings and investigations may call for different uh, uh, skill sets among the counselors, and it was discussed that we might have one chair of that committee who would then work with whichever counselors were selected by the president ad hoc on whichever issue came up. That's, that's as I recall, the discussion. Do, do you recall, counselors recall that discussion? I do. Yeah. But um, so do you want one consistent chair and then you'll, 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 you'll appoint the other members as, 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 well, the, as you deem okay. yeah, I mean, Chair, I think I that's what was discussed. That was I discussed. I mean, I actually, um, I, defer to the council, but I think to have one chair as a permanent appointed chair for the um, uh, this rather strange creature, which is a standing ad hoc committee, um, um, 
but the, what was discussed uh, by the last council was having um, a standing chair and then the other members to be appointed. Um, I'm open to anything and everything. Um, I re while recognizing actually the value that this committee holds. I, I just I just see that there there are three councilors. I signed it based according to what the rules were as it as they were presented to me. In the event that it doesn't, nothing changes in those three members. Um, the membership of that body. But if but the rules change, then it is my my preference would be to. Uh, my intent was to appoint Councillor Carney as the standing chair. To the, to the chair. Um, as I recall from the discussions at the end of the last session, um, the maker of the, the it was Councillor uh, Freeman Daniels that proposed this and suggested um, that in his his intent was that there at least be a standing chair and that by prerogative of the president, other other counselors would be appointed based on the situation. I think we had a, a limited discussion about that at the time. And there, there seemed to be good reason for that based on varied skill sets and given that hearings and investigations and even best practices could run a whole gamut of um, broad areas. So. Yeah, it's true you could have. You could have one of the, if the committee was totally populated, you could have a conflict with one of those members, depending on what was being looked into. You know, if you were looking into a transportation thing, you might want to populate it with people from transportation and parking. If you were looking into something relative to DPW, you might want the other members from, I think that's where the discussion came from, members from the council, the, the committee with DPW. So. Council Adams. Just thinking about how it may play out, it, if, there may be, it may not be always be entirely clear when an issue has com complete finality, and, and if another issue arose really quickly, um, which may require a different uh, membership, it might get kind of confusing. Um, so, I, I, I like the concept. I'm not sure there. I can foresee situations where it may um, cause a lot of confusion because. Um, Certain issues may not have very clear finality, and other issues may overlap. Um, well, I would, I would just suggest that often we have concurrent hearings going on right now in various committees. I don't know that it's that uncommon for us to have different people. So I think with the creation of this committee was to deal with, we use as an example um, the proposed hearing on. Um, on vibrant sidewalks that was referred to Edlu for lack of really a, a sensible place or you know reasoned place to send that um, that proposal so but right now we do have um, very committee specific hearings that happen in transportation and part I mean I don't think this precludes hearings happening in various committees anyway or being held by those but I think it's you know, more, uh, I think it made more sense for those that didn't have a natural place to which they would be conducted. When I Councilor Adams and Councilor Klein. Absolutely. Oh, you can go ahead and spoke again. I'm just curious, is there not any kind of precedent for joint committee work to, you know, if necessary, it could be done that way? It is. There, there, is. there are. I mean, you can do joint committee meetings the, it's unfortunate because the sponsor's not here, the original sponsor, although Councilor Adams worked with him on this, I think. So, I mean, he does have some historical understanding. This, this came as an offspring of the, the power, the new division of powers under the charter. And um, it's essentially an umbrella investigatory group that doesn't necessarily have judicial powers, but it has basically under, the, under what's allowed by ordinance. Um, Councilors can ask for um, department heads to they can make a request. In fact, actually, uh, Councilor Adams has done that. Councilor uh, Freeman Daniels has done that too. Make a request for information. You can investigate on on certain on on those levels. Um, and this was a body that would serve um, as a paladin, if <coughs> essentially, uh, with no specific assignment. 
but as si assignments or issues presented themselves, it was to serve as at least a kind of an, over, uh, an overarching body that could do the investigations across committees. And that would preclude joint committees convening as part of it. Um, I don't believe that's excluded under the rules. But um, so I'm just wondering, instead of that rotating, you know, depending on the issue, that it would just work together with the committee, that it would be appropriate to address mm -hmm. the issue around. And that's that's another well, possible discussion. It's not what what was proposed. We already voted it's not what to what establish it. That would be a significant change of the committee, so that would require um, us removing this or voting this down, and then reproposing a new. Uh, newer version this is an amended version of the Constitution of it so I'm not and that's not I mean that's possible too I don't have I don't honestly don't have any I don't have a dog in this fight personally I just I, my only concern is how we find this and how we proceed Councilor Adams. oh Council no and this um, I, as I recall this this sort of morphed itself in the discussion we were talking about it and, and I think most of us forgot that we didn't really take any action on exactly how we clarified the end of that last discussion. Mary, Mary I was looking at the minute. Mary remembers it, we have the minutes. It's, yeah. Uh, is yeah. There, yeah, we never we, voted on it. We, we, yeah. we, we talked about it a lot, but we never voted on the, on the change. And this is a committee that takes no action unless the entire council sends it something right. and says, okay, committee, take this topic and go with it. So theoretically, you know, if if it gets created tonight or it doesn't get created tonight, unless we tell, you know, if we haven't ever told it to do anything, we won't miss it until we send it something to do. So if we want to keep working on it, I mean, then that would be all right too, since until we actually assign it something, <coughs> it's not a, it's not a committee that would routinely get things because it's brand new. I like your idea, uh, but it certainly I think is worth having once we decide exactly how we want it to function. Yeah, I I suppose. I support as written because you know, I, despite this discussion, I I just I can just see situations where it wouldn't make sense. Um, for example, the, the vibrant sidewalks matter, that never reached finality really. I mean that, that's 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 still something that's kind of, I mean what became of that? I mean and what if and what if another issue arose, that um, that, say that was in in this committee and another issue arose that would that needed a different skill set so different membership. I mean that that would just create I, I think a good amount of confusion. And um, so, my I would support keeping it as is with, with the current membership as appointed. Thank you. I mean, the first thing this committee couldn't investigate could be itself, you know, and make a determination on what exactly <laughs> it thinks it is. But I'm wondering if we can make a commitment, whatever we do tonight, to re to review it at a, a date certain, perhaps before two years are up, to assess how it went. If that could be part of this discussion, I think that might be helpful. Just to establish it and then make a commitment to review it later, since it is new. My only concern, and it's, it's an ongoing over, overarching concern, about how we have committees and what they do for the council and what purpose they serve. I want committees personally, and I don't think I'd get a lot of disagreement here, I want committees not just for show and tell, not just for dog and pony shows, but to actually, to actually perform a function, making recommendations and helping the council understand an issue more in depth, and then to help us in the process of deliberation. If a committee does not serve that purpose, if we don't have committees serving that purpose, then we shouldn't vote for it. And I mean, we've already got some other committees that I know we need some serious work with. We still have, we still do not meet that criteria for the committee meetings that we have. Um, and we're much better, we're much, much better, but there's still room for improvement and I don't want to compound the problem by creating a, a, a committee that right now we're not all that confident about, that we're feeling just a little iffy about. We're not, we haven't, it seems that we haven't given it the, the due deliberation that it's entitled. Not that it ultimately would matter because it would, it just as, as Council Murphy described, if nothing gets sent to it, then it doesn't do anything, and then it's just it's just an atrophied limb. It doesn't have purpose, and and I think that's my only concern is that's setting bad precedent. And I, but that's just my opinion on this issue, and I I would defer to the will of the council for sure. I I, I do see the 
intrinsic value of this if it's done correctly? Well, I think it's unfortunate that this came to us at the very end of the term and not with a lot of time for us to to really deliberate, although that being said, we spent a good portion of the very last meeting of the last term talking about this very committee. And, you know, as I recall that discussion, um, there seemed good reason to leave it as one that was really um, kind of at really at the prerogative of the president to name, to name the members. We had discussed actually leaving it unstaffed at all and the council president would then name those counselors mm -hmm. the president saw fit to deal with uh, sub uh, topics as they came up. But that was, um, that seemed, that in itself seemed like it could be confusing or that it may make more sense to at least have one person who would um, chair that committee. And, it, but again, a lot of this came from the maker of the mm -hmm. proposal of the committee in the first place who's no longer here. So that's uh, just a thought about um, what Councillor Adams proposes with just staffing with three council members. Um, in a sense, that could take the politics out of something that you perhaps investigate in the future. You know, because while it could be useful to appoint people with certain skill sets, maybe it's good to have just a consistent three members who investigate everything. I agree, and also, I mean, I just, I could just foresee what if, what if um, many members of the council wanted to vie for those two spots? I, I could just see that as being problematic for the council president, and and and, and I echo council. Trust me, that's a problem anyway. But the, uh, but my other concern is not with this council, not with this president, but with another. A, a council president could garner a lot of power by making the initial three appointments, um, but at the same time could do it in the ad hoc position as well. But if you create an investigative committee that essentially starts doing essentially, but they have to be, it has to be approved by the entire council, the investigations, as Councilor Murphy pointed out, that's the balance on it, the check and balance, so that it couldn't necessarily be abused. Although there's, you know, in all these circumstances, there's ways to abuse. And we always have to keep that in mind how we're trying to keep checks against that. Um, so, um, you know, I could see the, the same happening with an ad hoc status, too. So, so just, uh, you know, <laughs> what's your pleasure? Um, I just want to also note, uh, Councillor Klein makes a, a good point that um, in many cases, uh, hearings that involve either a particular standing committee or a joint committee um, would be more appropriate than it being referred to, to this kind of overarching committee. Mm -hmm. For example, the vibrant sidewalks, you know, may have been, while it went to Ed Lou, and he could uh, suggest that it would be more um, appropriate for social services. And so in, in that sense, those committees could work together for something like that. There's the two other pieces of this committee. It's the investigations and practices that probably would be more of the work, I would imagine, just because hearings, um, you know, typically will be on topics that may already be within the purview of a particular committee. So the investigations and practices is more of the, the area, it seems to me, that it would um, be a useful committee or not redundant. And quite often, we have a good time and send things to numbers of committees. I mean, we'll send things to, most things wind up at ordinance, but they'll go to Adlu, or they'll go, they'll go transportation and parking, or they'll go any number of different places. So, uh, you know, it's, even if those committees are not acting jointly, they act on their own and feed that back to the council. So some, sometimes things go any number of different places, and council never takes action until all of those bodies report back with their opinions and we all get to share that insight. So just to, just to clarify, unless there's an amendment, my understanding is that if voted, it'll consist of three members no. as, yeah. as appointed okay. earlier. Okay. The, uh, and I don't know if this was seconded. Uh -huh. this, uh, yeah. It was, okay, so the, we're debating the amendment now. 
uh, the amendment. Is there an actual amendment on the floor? The amendment was, yeah, was the yeah. one that was offered actually, although not voted on apparently, at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. If you recall, the, the amendment was, a, yeah, I mean, this w we discussed it at length, but apparently it wasn't offered and then voted, right. voted on. So there's and that amendment was the one where, um, as we talked about, it was discussed that there be a standing chair for an ad hoc committee that would meet at the will of the council and at the appointment of the, uh, at the president. So that was made and seconded? Yeah, so that, that's the amendment that's proposed, and we're debating the amendment now. So um, I'm going to ask for a vote on that. Is it, is, is, do you want any more discussion on that? Uh, all those in roll favor, call. I'm sorry, roll, uh, a roll, roll call? call? Okay. All those in favor of, of the <coughs> amendment as proposed by Councilor Carney, uh, roll call, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> the amendment is to change the committee uh, to change the committee to have one chair and then as a standing ad hoc committee have the other membership be appointed by the council president based uh, to determined by the nature of the of the investigation. Um, <laughs> I think we need more discussion, but but yes. Councilor Sheriff? I agree with Councilor O'Donnell, but yes. Councilor Adams? No. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Kelly? Yes. Councilor Klein? No. Councilor Labar? Yes. So the amendment carries. Um, and, I, and, and now we go to the original motion, which is now to vote on the rules. The rules. The rules. The rules. And the, so I'll move second reading. So there's a motion for second reading. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on that? Is everyone, everyone okay with the rest of this package as it stands? Uh, all those in favor, would you prefer a roll call on this? Or? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that's the new order. These are the new rules that have been accepted. And uh, as to that, the final committee, I mean, I think we still, we still have the authority to change it as, as we see fit and if it's appropriate. To have a, I, mean, I agree. I don't disagree with you. I think we need a more expanded conversation on it, and particularly given that a third of this body is, is new and that not that it, not that those of us who were actually sitting on it before are any better <laughs> off as far as understanding on this. So, um, but I think you'll find that not all things are etched deeply in stone on these things. Um, this is uh, this is of course setting the schedule uh, for for the council in the coming year. Uh, at 2014 and 15, um, this is the attached city council meeting scheduled for 2014 to 2015 uh, B, and hereby is adopted. As you recall, uh, Council Specter, who is not present, actually made a request for a one date change in June. Uh, in August. August. I'm sorry, in August. Um, any discussion on that? Does anyone want to amend the date? Because this is the original. You'll recall we have voted the original document as it stood mm -hmm. and uh, discussed the fact that give, once we all check our calendars, we can uh, determine whether it's appropriate to change. Just, uh, which way did he want to move the August day? There was two dates. He was either one week back or one week forward, one week forward I think. Well, Is that right, Mary? He was, yes. he wanted, yeah, one week back and one. Right. And I know that the 21st was not going to be possible for me. Um, and it was very close, it seemed, to have it then at the first week of um, August, since I think our July meeting is the, the end, of, end of July. Well, it's in the middle. It's in the July 10th is what. Oh, is it the 10th? Okay. So you could do August 8th if you wanted to. 
uh, uh, Councilor Spector is not here to defend himself or to make his case, but uh, I mean, it seems to me that someone's going to be absent some way, somehow. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's summer, it's very difficult to, to make arrangements. My wife was making all sorts of noises from the audience. I have no idea what it was about. She, she was telling me. Was, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so there is no motion to amend. Okay. All those in favor of the schedule. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I need I need a motion in so a second. 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 Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um. You. This is actually uh, an ordinance. This is a, upon the recommendation of Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels and the Transportation Parking Commission, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, to be amended by revising Section 312-36 of said code, providing that parking meter locations and regulations, and this be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton City Council, assembled as follows. Section 1, that Section 312-36 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton Massachusetts be amended so that such section shall read as follows. Notwithstanding subsection E of this, of this section under special circumstances or in connection with a special event, the Transportation and Parking Commission by majority vote may alter the fee structure for the E. John Gare the third parking garage for a period not to exceed five days. In the case of repair or replacement of machine parts or infrastructure used in the collection of parking fees, the mayor has the authority to temporarily alter or suspend parking fees in any municipal lot or meter space if it is not practical to collect the established fees due to the repair or replacement of parts or infrastructure. Such temporary power shall not be extended beyond the first city council meeting from the time such power is exercised. The mayor will write a letter to the city council president divulging the reasons for the repairs, the relationship be between the repairs and the impracticality of collecting the establishing uh, parking fees, the established parking fees, and the reasoning behind the alteration of the fee structure upon the exercise of such temporary power. Is there a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, this is getting referred. To us. This is a referral. All right, this is. Uh, yes. I have a question. Now, this is upon the recommendation of Councilor Freeman Daniels and the Transportation Park Commission. So they're sponsors. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And that's why it's not going, that's why it's not. That would be my assumption. Why so it doesn't need to go, go back, back to the yeah. park. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is referred to uh, ordinance. I so moved to refer to ordinance. Unless there's a second. Second. Unless, of course, the newly constituted Transportation Parking Commission has an interest in thinking about it. Yeah, that you can send it back if the councilor's there. I know. I think we have, well, the two council members are on uh, new appointment, so. And they have not. Um, yeah, I actually talk it over with, with them. That's that's entirely up to you guys. I, I know you haven't even sat on the committee yet, so it's it's, it's kind of flitty. It's just well, I'll, I'll, just to give the opportunity, I'll amend that to say ordinance and transportation and parking. Okay. For the sake of for and discussion. you okay with that amendment? Okay. All right. So the referral now is to ordinance and transportation. And, and the reason I made that amendment is also, I mean. The counselors who are on transportation and parking may hear from their colleagues on that commission their sentiments about this and it might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Council Lepart? I agree with um, Councilor Carney. I, I think that's the right direction that should go. Uh, and I think, doesn't it only relate to changing fees if something blows up and nothing's blown up at the moment, so it's not like it's a, a timely thing? Or if the the, the right. gate the card dispensing machine breaks. Yeah, like, right. We got time to talk about it. Oh, Canada. <laughs> um, okay. All right then. Uh, so the motion is to refer. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions. Uh, this uh, there's a joint meeting. Here you go, Councilor Klein. A joint meeting of the City Council and School Committee, and this is being called by the mayor uh, in accordance with the Northampton Charter, um, 
Chapter 7 2, Section 2, Annual Budget Policy. Thursday, January 30th, 2014, at 7 p.m. at JFK Middle School Community Room. And that's at 100 Bridge Road in Florence. Uh, the agenda below is a roll call. Uh, Mayor Narkowitz will review the financial condition of the city and revenue and expenditure forecasts and other relevant information in order to develop a coordinated budget. There will be a discussion. And then we'll adjourn sometime before 1 a.m. Uh, and no Questions. votes. <laughs> Just a, um, since you brought up the 1 a.m., does that um, – would a joint committee meeting like that, which rules would, would that fall under? Just out of curiosity, since we have the 11 p.m. rule, I don't know that the school committee has a similar Oh, rule. which rules do we have to conform to? This is yeah. a special meeting called by the mayor, and he doesn't have special rules. So it could, so. It, theoretically, even though you meant it tongue-in-cheek, it could go it could to go 1 o'clock. The school committee does have an 11 o'clock Oh, they do? Okay. They have Thank to be, they have, they have to get up early because they get to school later than they were planning. So, <laughs> and there's no voting on there will be no votes. This is all for purposes of discussion and okay. informational meetings, so there will be no vote except to adjourn. I only have 800 PowerPoint slides. Great. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm just, <laughs> actually, this is, this is critical. Schools constitute, uh, depending on how you read it, close to 53 percent of the budget. And, uh, and w under new conditions and circumstances and under the new charter, the budget season starts PDQ, and so whereas before it was usually deferred, and the mayor is doing uh, due diligence and actually, actually, what he's not only authorized but charged to do. So this is, and it, and I think it's good. We all sit, in, we don't have enough microphones, which is probably for the best ultimately. Um, but the, we all sit around the room, we all get to meet each other, and then we all get to get a sense of what what our mutual priorities are. So that, uh, once again, that's Thursday the 30th at, um, at the community room, 7 p.m. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure we'll be up before 1 o'clock. Um, I have no other updates. Uh, are there any other information requests? Uh-oh, uh do I have another update? Oh, I thought you were going to hit me for something. Okay. The municipal offices are closed. It's a federal so holiday. We don't have meetings usually on a day when city offices are closed. And unfortunately, the third Thursday, I mean the third Monday in February is President's Day, which is also um, when you wanted to have a meeting. So you might want to have a meeting sometime in January or February just to get together and start your commitment. And you can try to decide what you'd like to do and please contact me and I will let you know as soon as possible if that can happen. Yeah, well advised. Thank you. Um, it's, it's so we all get a sense of what, uh, because there's also room reserved and there's also trying to address uh, on, on citizens committees as well to make sure there's no conflicts and everything works out and everyone's happy. And that's what we want. We want everyone to be happy. So uh, is there any new business? I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all very much.